So, it's uh, currently 1am where I am, and Nintendo has released uh, the first gameplay demonstration of Tears of the Kingdom. So I'm going to watch that live here with chat. Uh, yeah, let's take a look. Let me know how the volume is. But I think it should be okay. Alright, here we go. This has been only up for two minutes. I'm A.G. Aonuma, producer of the Legend of Zelda series. Uh, I hope they show dungeons. That's that's my well, one hope is seeing how the world is. Development on the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is now complete. You would hope so. Thank you very much for waiting. Many of you are looking forward to this game, and we've released a few trailers so far. Although it'll just be a brief glimpse, I'm going to actually play the game for you all today and show you what it's like. Okay? Let's begin. Here we are in the land of Hyrule. Volume a little louder. That's as loud as it goes. Like the Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, there's a vast world to explore. Of course, can't do much about it. It's the same world as is. It's changed in many ways. If we talk about all of the changes today, we'll run out of time. So we hope you'll seek them out for yourself when the game launches. In this game, the vast world of Hyrule reaches high into the sky. You'll notice some land masses floating up there. We call them Sky Islands. Okay. You're probably wondering something. How do you get to the Sky Islands when they're so high up? If we take a look... Oh, something's falling from the sky. Do you see it? I wonder what that is. Let's head over to it. So far, the map looks at the pretty similar. Here it is. Okay, let's use one of Link's new abilities. Look at his arm. If you do this on the rock that just fell... Look, it started rising. <laughs> an elevator. Recall, which rewinds an object's movement. Since I just used recall on the fallen New rock, power. I can now rise into the sky. We're a lot closer to the sky islands. Let's use the paraglider to reach one of them. Oh, please let this be just a, a dungeon in the sky. Here too. I made it. There are lots of ways to reach the sky islands, so we hope you'll try a few different methods. Okay, now we're on a slightly bigger sky island. Just like on the surface, there are several man-made structures. Some trees are also growing here. You won't see many of those yellow trees on the surface, though. Let's walk around for a bit. <laughs> Do all the females still sound like they're dying of thirst? The Link? Probably. There's a branch Don't expect too many changes, mechanically speaking, like, like the this, durability thing is going to be the same. Might come in handy later. Let's continue. Oh, something's there. This is a brand new enemy called a Construct. We'll fight it using the branch we just picked up. Ah, the branch broke. Say, not good, not just let it go. Quick, get another branch. <laughs> it's annoying, but... So was like a stamina system when it was introduced for the first time. Moving on. We're past that now. We've now explored more of this sky island. As expected, fighting with just a branch won't get us very far. Also, this branch is almost broken. So here's another one of Link's new abilities. If we use this branch and the rock over here and do this, look, we can stick them together. What we the crap? A makeshift hammer. <laughs> this is called Fuse. Oh you can my stick god. Objects together to create new weapons with various effects. Let's take on another construct with this fused weapon. That's cool. We're dealing with two of them at once. <laughs> oh, we beat one. The weapon's attack has definitely improved. The other branch broke, but this weapon has much better durability. Hey, you can do okay. All sorts of things by experimenting with the so they're addressing durabilities with fusions. You can fuse two weapons, for example. Oh. If you take this long stick and fuse it with a pitchfork. 
We can create a weapon with a much longer attack. <laughs> That's range. cool. With this, we don't have to get too close to enemies, and we can safely attack from a distance. You can also fuse arrows with materials in your inventory. What? For instance, try fusing this leaf to an arrow. Please tell me we can fuse <laughs> meat. Make a meat an arrow. Elemental material to an arrow and you can freeze far away enemies. Wow. That's like on the fly crafting. In addition, hmm, let's see. Ah, oh, there's a bird flying around. If you're out hunting, you might feel that aiming with an arrow is too difficult. Apparently, my eyes can't track fast-moving objects as of late, so my shots rarely land. So, at times like these, here's an eyeball you can get by defeating monsters. Fuse it to an arrow and... <laughs> Look, it homed in on the target. <laughs> Let's try this on another. Saw the dragon. Those dragons are in Breath of the Wild. It's um the ones that you get the scales to be able to upgrade armor. It's very simple. Depending on what you stick together, the fuse ability could also be beneficial for hunting. But they might have a secondary purpose, yeah. I fused Whoa. a mushroom to my shield. Now you're probably wondering if this has any use. Well, this mushroom is actually a puff shroom. Let's fight an enemy with this. I blocked with the shield. <laughs> oh no, this is okay, cool. Okay, there's smoke now. The enemy's lost sight of Link, so... Attack! Even if you Man, this just gives combat, crafting materials, like, the stuff that you get. Methods. It just gives it so much more purpose game, now, as opposed to just cooking. Weapons by defeating strong enemies. But in this game, fusing even the weakest weapon with something else <laughs> could turn it into a useful weapon. There are even That's more so good. options for sticking things together. Let me demonstrate. Some of the Sky Islands even have rivers. We'll want to cross this one, but swimming across it, well, the river's too wide for that. We need a boat. Of course, there the creativity on this game is going to be so much more than Breath of the Wild. So, we'll lift up this log and attach it to a second log. Oh. Let's do one more. We'll bring this over here and attach a third log. It's a makeshift raft. This is another new ability called Ultra Hand. Even though the logs are currently attached, they can be detached. Let's modify the shape of the raft. You can always attach things or detach them like this. I'm going to make a dick raft. Now, if we put this on the water, it's made of wood, so the buoyancy will keep it afloat. We've made a simplified version of a boat. However, it won't move in its current state, so we'll need something to propel it forward. Hmm. There's something here. Let's try <laughs> Behold, a penis raft. Oh, wind. It's blowing wind. Man. Looks like we found a fan. Why don't we try attaching it? So the open world aspects are going to get pretty crazy. It's just... This should make the boat well balanced. Oh man, if this has dungeons, I swear this game is going to be just game of the year already. Okay, they're attached. All right, let's try moving the boat. Hey, it's moving. It's sailing pretty fast with the wind from the fans. Since we added two fans, we should be able to cross the river in no time. All right, we reached the other side. In the most recent trailer, we showed scenes of Link riding a large car and a flying machine. Those are built? Those vehicles actually aren't in the game from the start. Instead, you'll be able to freely craft them on Oh my god. There are all sorts of objects you'll come across in this game. And depending on how you use your imagination, you can do a lot with them. So, try crafting different things and explore this world at your leisure. <laughs> That's so good. There are even more new abilities. 
Take this building over here. Okay, watch this. Look. Yeah, this was in the first trailer. Phasing. This ability is called ascend. If you're in a place with a ceiling, you can go through to the floor above you. There are some restrictions, but what's great about this ability is that as long as there's a ceiling, you can use it anywhere. For example, this place has a cave with a hill right above it. If we use the ability here, Come on. Wow. Keep going. Okay. We emerged at the top of the hill. In the previous game, you had to use stamina to climb a mountain. But in this game, if there's a mountain with a cave like this one, you can now get to the top without having to climb all the way up. Here's another example. Imagine you're stuck in a cage. If it's got a ceiling, you know what to do, right? Exactly. Oh, there's another construct. It seems to be holding a strange weapon. Some enemies are equipped with fused weapons, so battles will play out a bit differently from the previous game. Ah, it blew me away with wind. <laughs> Looks like it's got some sort of fan. Ah, I got pushed off. Ah, oh, well, let's just return to the surface. Oh man, that's that's Skyward Sword you vibes right there. From the sky to the surface, like this. It feels so what good. is that marking on the ground? Look at that thing. In the sky, you'll be able to look out across the land. You can also search for destinations that pique your interest. Once you've chosen your destination, you can speed things up, like this. Let's dive into this river. And we're back on the surface. There are still so many things I'd like to show you, but let's leave it at that for now. What did you think? Some of Link's new abilities were updated from the previous game. I'm sure some of you watching me play were thinking, wait, if you could do that, then maybe you could do this too. In this game, you can do a lot of things just by thinking about what's even possible. There's still a lot of new gameplay, mysteries, and encounters we couldn't show today, but they're all jam-packed into this unfamiliar Hyrule, and we hope you'll use your imagination to explore it. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Man. Okay. There's quite a bit to unpack here. Okay. Wait, there's more. What is it? Oh, limit. Yeah, this was leaked. This was leaked. OLED, OLED model. That does look very nice, though. Yeah, very cool design. But, you know, scalpers. Pro controller and a carry case. Okay. Yeah. Alright, um, one sec. So. Yeah, I mean, what they showed here, the weapon fusion thing, that was really good. And I guess that addresses people's concerns with durability. So the answer is yes, they have addressed durability, but not in the way you would think. Instead of making weapons more durable, uh, you can combine them and do more interesting things with it. I mean, just like how he said at the end, he said, you know, I wonder if most of you are wondering if there's certain things you can do. And he kind of hinted that yes, and honestly, when that UI popped up with the arrows, like, let's look for it. Where was it? 
I mean, these are basic weapons as well, like... I imagine some of these combinations are gonna get intricate. But the, the bow? Like, okay, this, this part here. Like, why would meat be an option if you couldn't pick meat? I think we're gonna have meat arrows, and I- and I really wanna know what it does. <laughs> like, it's going to be the very first thing I try. I'm making a meat arrow. <laughs> because why would it be an option otherwise, right? And, um, I mean, the chew jelly becoming elemental arrows, very cool. And the eye being heat-seeking arrows, like... Very good diversity from a weapon perspective in this one. So not only can you fuse weapons to make new weapons, but the arrow system... I mean, we've gone beyond element stuff now. It's not like the three, you know, fire, ice, and electric, right? Now we have, they'll do interesting things, and that's really cool. Um, and, you know, this, this right here. This was great. Like, just being able to take two random objects and turn it into a weapon. I think there's definitely going to be a lot of creativity here. And, of course... I mean, this, making structures to get around, this was really awesome. Like, I can imagine just people sinking a lot of time into just making a, a really cool raft or like a, a flying machine, right? I can't wait to see just what people can do with this, because... I mean, people got creative with stasis in Breath of the Wild, like, finding insane ways to launch Link into unknown areas, and this is just going to take it to a whole new level. The crafting looks nice, yes. Meat arrows used to attract wildlife? Maybe. I don't know. Um, outside of that, these powers seem to come from his hand. What Whatever's happened to his arm... Um, so, it seems to be things that shift reality, because look, like, he's phasing through solid objects, he's merging objects together. Like, whatever's happened to him, he's gained some ability. Like, look at it. He's, he's lost his arm. Um, the one thing that I found interesting here, I don't know if you could hear it, I heard it, um, this area in particular, when he was playing it, I don't know if he, it was because he was playing it, or maybe they put the music in, but I could hear, like, the theme from Hyrule Castle. I don't know, let, let me just... There are some restrictions, but what's great about this ability... Yeah, listen, listen, if you can hear ceiling, it. You can use it anywhere. For example, this place has a cave with a hill right above it. Maybe it's not the Hyrule Castle it thing. For example, this place has a cave with a hill right above. But I guess what I'm trying to ascertain is like the role that these islands play. Um, like some of them, there'll be smaller experiences. I get that, but this almost has the vibe of a dungeon. If you're looking at what's happening on the mini map, that's what I'm hoping for. That. Like, these islands are just enlarged version of shrines, but there's gonna be- it looks like there's some overarching goal to every island. And when you have structures like this, like, it's almost like a dungeon, but not really. Like, if we go a little bit further... Just a sec. Here. There. It looks like there's objectives that you have to do. So there's, like, little- little ticks. Um, but I mean, outside of that, uh, other stuff I noticed, like a rail system, right, there. So, I imagine making a minecart is probably, like, something else you'll be able to do. I'm being very analytical, <laughs> just examining things that I noticed, uh, whilst I was watching. And, I mean, when he fell down, like, let's look at this section. 
there's definitely some new things on the map, so... I mean, there's a lot of fog of war. It already had that, Breath of the Wild. It, it did, but I guess... I think here you're actually going to make the minecart, whereas in Breath of the Wild had them just pre-made. I think that's what I'm saying. It's not that the minecart tracks are new. Um, I'm trying to find the... Destination. Okay, there. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Go back a little bit. Yeah, this. This is this just massive rune symbol thing on the ground. Like, that is a massive area. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks like there's a lot of islands, so. The view is sick, yeah. It, this is just one part of the map, by the way, like, what, if I can identify this properly, like, we're near Lanayru, like, there's the river, and there's the mountains. So this is, this would be representing, like, a third, not even a third of the map, like, maybe even a quarter. What we're seeing here. Um, I think that's all I got just from what I noticed. I don't know if anyone else wants to point out something that they thought was interesting or maybe just. I think I'll watch this again on my own, but you know, that's that's what I gathered from it. Um, I think everything they've done to the gameplay is really good and. It's definitely going to make the gameplay more varied, for sure. It's just... The big question is... If these islands are basically treated like shrines now. Like, instead of shrines, we have these islands instead. But effectively, they're the same thing, just maybe bigger. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Like... That's, that's the big question right now is all these elements fantastic for exploration and the gameplay loop. It's just, what are we going to be doing? That is still unanswered and I don't think we can really make too many assumptions from this. So, alright. That's all I got. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's going to wrap up tonight's stream chat. I do got to get some rest. It's 1.30 in the morning here. So I just want to stay up, watch this, and I guess give you my thoughts uh, as this happens. So, you know, hope you did enjoy that. Uh, I'll be putting this up on YouTube later. So, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, hope you did enjoy my little viewing thingy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow and we're going to be starting... Uh, Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Spirit Tracks. So we're continuing playing through all the Zelda games until this game finally comes out. So I am up to Spirit Tracks. So we'll be starting that tomorrow. Hope you'll join me for that one. But in the meantime, yeah. There's always YouTube if you want to watch more of my content. So I hope you do check it out. Alright, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks again for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed.